Welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Calling Uncensored. I'm here with Natalie Schroot. Schroot, sorry, I just pronounced that wrong. Um, she's an intuitive success coach. We actually met on Instagram a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to bring her on the show. She helps with mindset. She works with spiritual laws. She's certified in hypnotherapy, NLP, and uh, she helps primarily women with um, success coaching, but I'll let her go into that a little bit more in detail so she can explain a little bit about more of what she does. And yeah, I'm excited to have a powerful conversation with you today, Natalie. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Well, I'm so excited and honored to be here. Um, yes, I, I do call myself an intuitive success coach, but my background is in life coaching, hypnotherapy, NLP. I've done a lot of deep dive into the law of attraction and understanding that entire realm, you know, how the universe really works. And then I've also been an intuitive my whole life, which I kind of shut out in my earlier years. But in my later years, um, the last several years, I've worked with some psychic coaches to help me develop that and to understand all the impressions that were coming through. So it's kind of a nice big spectrum of skills that I've used to both, you know, improve my life, but then also the lives of my clients as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You said something interesting that just sort of clicked with me that I wanted to elaborate on. Um, you said that before your empathic or your intuitive abilities, you sort of shut down. Yeah. I mean, in my early life, I think everyone has their own journey, right? I was deaf. I've always been an empath. I've always been intuitive. Um, I actually have, I can channel all psychic skills of like clairvoyance and clairaudience. I receive messages in a variety of way every day. But when I was younger, I didn't really understand that about myself. Like no one was there to teach me what it meant to be an empath or to be intuitive. And so I feel like my younger years were really challenging. You know, I was receiving intuitive impressions, but I didn't know what it was. I just thought it was my imagination and I didn't know how to follow that. You know, we learn from a very young age when we're kids to kind of shut down what's going on emotionally with us and to listen to what our parents say. And we think we have to be these perfect children and, you know, do all of these different things in order to be loved and accepted. And so my younger years were actually very challenging. I, as an empath, I grew up in a really big family. I have four sisters and, you know, my mother was home with us full time. My dad was working a lot and there was just a lot of tension, a lot of arguments. Everyone wanted attention, you know, between the siblings and my mother was overwhelmed. She, you know, had ha had her own issues. And so there was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of emotional outbursts. And as an empath, I just internalized it all. Like I felt everything that was going on with everyone in the house. And later on, I realized not everyone experiences life that way, but as an empath, I did. Um, and I just had a lot of kind of negative patterns. You know, I was in my mind replaying a lot of the traumas when I was younger and I was reliving things emotionally over and over again. Like I memorized these traumatic events and even the small traumas of just daily arguments between the sisters and, you know, my mother having an emotional outburst, my father coming home and being angry. And, and I just, I internalized it all. And with that pattern, what I didn't realize and what I know now through the law of attraction is, and the, whatever you focus your attention on is what you get more of in your life. Mm -hmm. And so as a young person, no one was teaching me that. And no one was inside my head <laughs> saying, Natalie, you should probably think different and focus your attention in a different way, you know? But for me, I kind of perpetuated these negative thought processes and these negative emotions. And, you know, by the time I was a teenager and I was in, you know, middle school and high school, I was experiencing chronic pain. I had some deep sense of, you know, unworthiness. I feel like I had to earn my worth. I had to be the perfect daughter and to fix everyone else in the family because Natalie's there to fix everyone. Natalie's the one who's really good at calming everyone down and she's the perfect child in A, B, and C. I took on this personality as an empath of being the healer and the fixer in the family. If anything was going wrong with my sisters or even my mom, I was the one who had to fix it. And the burden was kind of put on me in the end, it ended up being a gift because I'm really great at feeling out energy and people and I'm good at healing and talking things through and, and helping people see perspective. But I mean, I was doing this at the age of seven years old, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And then by the time I was in high school, you know, at that point, I was really, I was still receiving a lot of intuitive impressions, but I was still shutting it out. And things started to build up um, to the point where I was in extreme depression. You know, my sisters were doing drugs and then I was doing drugs and um, there was just, there was a lot going on in our family and in our household. And I continued to internalize it. I continued to blame myself for not being able to fix everyone and everything. And 
by the time I was, you know, about 18, 19, I was experiencing severe migraines to the point where I was going to the hospital a lot. I was vomiting uncontrollably. Um, I, you know, had more digestive issues. I was, you know, the migraines and physical pain. Um, it got to the point where I just didn't want to, I didn't know how to deal with my emotions. I didn't know how to deal with what I was experiencing and spent an entire year just getting high, like morning, midday, and evening. I, I didn't know how to deal with life. I didn't have the skills at that point. Um, and it got to the point where I literally thought I was going crazy. Like I thought I was psychotic. I, it was so intense and it was so overwhelming to be inside my own mind and my own emotions. And at that point I realized if I'm ever like, I knew it was meant for something more. And if I was ever going to get through it, I, I had to stop doing the drugs. I had to face all of my traumas and figure out how to heal from the inside out. Mm -hmm. And that was when like the big shift happened for me. And I found, you know, the world of personal development and personal growth. I started reading one book after another. And, you know, in my twenties, I read hundreds of books and I'm still reading books all the time, you know, to learn and to grow and to improve myself. But, um, you know, my twenties was a long journey. It was then bringing to light all of the things that I was experiencing. My chronic pain got a lot worse. I started getting digestive issues. The migraines continued. Um, you know, I had so much emotional trauma from my high school boyfriend relationship that I like didn't want to be with men at all in my twenties. There was like seven years where I was like, I'm never going to have a boyfriend. Um, because I couldn't handle letting someone in and experiencing that kind of pain again. Um, and it just, it just got kind of out of control with what I was experiencing physically. I'm also very clairsentient. So I feel a lot of physical sensations in my body. It was to the point where two or three times a year, I was in so much extreme pain that I couldn't, I could barely get out of bed. I would scream literally to sit up and I would scream to lay down because my neck hurt, my back hurt, you know, my digestive issues were so bad. And I would go to the doctors and they had no answers for me at all. Um, but a lot of it was the, the emotional stuff that I was going through. Um, and so it, it, it turned into this really big journey of figuring out how to heal, how to let go of the past traumas, how to reframe how I looked at life. And, you know, I ended up going to school, starting out as a dancer, but I had so many chronic pain injuries that I ended up getting into athletic training, which is very much like a physical therapist, um, because I wanted to heal my body. And through that process, and even as I was working for years as, you know, an athletic trainer in entertainment, um, working with dancers, I realized a lot of the pain that people had wasn't even from an actual injury. It was from the emotional stuff. And through that process of working hands-on with people, I started picking up a lot of intuitive information. I could see colors in their body. I could see shapes. I could feel their emotions. Sometimes I would touch someone and I would have a visual impression of something they had been through. And I would feel the emotion as if I was like in the room with them going through that trauma. And I, I didn't know how to deal with that. And I was like, wow, as I continued to awaken and heal myself, because in the background, I was doing the inner work the whole time. I was you know, doing the journaling and I was, you know, doing my best to master law of attraction and feel better and heal myself on the emotional level as I was healing people on a physical level. And a lot of this came from just, you know, I had so much that I had to heal <laughs> that I, I then wanted to help heal other people in a lot of ways. And once I really started to open up spiritually and emotionally, that was when things started to shift big time. And I kind of shifted my career from working with the physical healing body to feeling mentally healing on the mental and emotional side, because that will heal all of the physical chronic pains as well. Um, and that's, yeah, during that time, as I was working with people, that was when I started getting into more of the, the life coaching and the hypnotherapy and finding NLP, neuro-linguistic programming, just really digging deep into the subconscious mind and how we hold so many heavy, you know, negative thought patterns, emotional patterns, and just traumas, not only of our own, but generational traumas. There's so many things that we pick up that we don't even realize we're doing, mm -hmm. but it's, it's been an interesting journey, a beautiful journey. And, you know, I, I love what I do now. I feel like I can help people on such a bigger level than working just, you know, one-on-one -on -one with an injury and with soft tissue work, like this work goes so much deeper and the long-term effects are so much greater and accelerate over time when it comes to someone actually creating a life that they truly love and being pain free and, you know, experiencing more joy and manifestations of whatever they desire to have. Yes. It's so true. Everything you said, there's so much, I love the, the whole holistic approach that you offer. Um, I have uh, so many similar experiences to you. It's so funny. Um, God, um, 
the, it's really interesting. I teach this a lot too, that you're often your gift. When you deny your gift, it becomes like your kryptonite. It really can, you know, but when you own your gift and you recognize and you truly understand what your gift is and you own your gift, then it's, it's like gold to you. It's like the, you know what I mean? It's like completely shifts, but denying it and or suppressing it or running from it or just like not owning it will have the complete opposite effect on your life. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a red flag that goes off. It's like, Hey, this is you. This is you. This is the essence of your being. This is your mission. This is what you you know, your soul is guiding you towards. And if you don't do it, it's going to be really hard. <laughs> but the opposite is like you said, is also true. You know, when you embrace, embrace who you are and you look at it as something beautiful, this gift, you know, my chronic pain, I, I used to think like, why is this happening to me? I'm such a victim. I was a victim for most of my life to all the physical symptoms that I was having and the emotional breakdowns. You know, I was the type of person for the first 30 years of my life. I was having crying breakdowns every month, every other week. Sometimes, you know, there were years in my life, every single day I was crying, years that went on. And I look at that now as, wow, what a an amazing experience to go through that and to be able to come out on the other side. And now it's like, I hardly ever cry because I've done so much inner work and I'm so much happier, but those were all signs and symptoms of me not being in alignment with who I truly am. And if I didn't have those things, if I didn't have the chronic pain, if I didn't have the emotional breakdowns and all of those things, I wouldn't have worked so hard to heal. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some people, it's just, they think life is happening to them, but because it was such a physical experience for me, I had no choice but to figure it out, you know, take the time and the effort to, to go through that hard journey of learning what's really going to heal me. How can I really turn this around? How can I shift my life mm -hmm. so that I'm out of pain? And now, you know, I'm 35 and I've cleared out 90% of my chronic pain, 90% of all of my symptoms. And I feel like I'm very close to clearing out the rest. I've had to reprogram my entire nervous system, reprogram like how I feel physically in my body every single day through my thoughts, my emotions, through all this inner work. And it, it really is miraculous because now I'm at the point where I see so many more beautiful synchronicities in my life. I'm so much, I'm grateful for so much. And when I look at the traumas that I lived in my younger years, th the emotion's just not there anymore. I just don't get upset or emotional about it. And, you know, for anyone who's listening, who has been through anything even slightly, you know, similar to this, it is possible for all of us to go from a place of deep traumas, of pain, of, you know, just emotional up and downs for years and years and to come out on the other side. When you do the inner work, anything is possible. You can truly create any life you desire to have. You have the drive to do it and the consistency and the passion to make that happen for yourself. Yes, that's so true. It's so it's true, you know, like when it, so like even your gift as an empath, when you weren't owning your gift as an empath, it was ruling you, you know, your sensitivity, mm -hmm. your, your veil, you know, your emotion. And so, so many empaths that are listening to this, cause I have like pretty much everybody that listens to this podcast is spiritual teacher, healer, light worker, some kind, not owning that it will then rule you. But when you own your gift and you start to embrace that, then that's when that can empower you. And also, like you're saying, the wounds are your gift too. When you fully take accountability and you're ready to get out of the victim mindset and start to use these as, you know, I think it's Rumi that said the wound is where the light enters, right? It sort of cracks you open and allows, you know, it, it allows that light to come in so you can start to heal your life. If you choose to perceive it that way, and it is, when you choose to perceive it that way and you're willing to... Uh, take accountability and perceive it that way, then you get out of victim mode and you start to become the cause in your life instead of just sitting at the effect level where everything's happening to you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, what would you say like one of your like biggest like core defining moments are like where any like instant, I know I remember I, I resonate with your story a lot. There was one where where you, when you were talking, it reminded me of when I was really sick with gut health issues and nobody could, you know, like going to mainstream, mainstream medical community would have just given me like antidepressants, I think even for IBS and things like that. Like they don't really know how to treat anything like that. Like nobody knows what candida is. It's like, you just get the runaround and even going to naturopaths, it was still not treating me really at a holistic level. And I remember sitting at my naturopath one time and she's like, you just need to change your lifestyle. And for some reason that clicked with me, even though she was giving me all these um, prescriptions 
um, supplements rather. And I didn't even take the supplements because my system was already so sensitive. I could, I didn't even really have foods I could eat at the time. I had so many allergies, let alone supplement, you know, everything was affecting me. And I just literally took that to heart and I started to perceive myself as healed and in the process of healing versus the victim that can never eat anything. And, oh, I'm so sensitive and I have to go to this part. And now I can't eat. When people ask me how I'm doing, I was programmed programmed to respond as the victim and they were responding back to me like oh it's okay you know poor baby kind of stuff and then when people started to ask me how I was feeling I would great I'm healing I'm in the process of healing like I'm, I'm incorporating more foods like I just started to switch like the story that I was telling myself and after a few months I went back to the naturopath and she did a gut flora test and it had an A plus rating right it was like she uses it to teach she's like the teacher at the medical schools for naturopath, you know, for naturopaths. And she uses my gut flora test as like the study of a perfect gut flora snapshot. And I had done nothing that uh, none of the supplements, none of that stuff. I just shifted my perception of who I was and I no longer associated with being the victim. Yeah. And that's powerful because that, that is like the key to all healings, whatever you're dealing with. Um, and even if it's a relationship issue or, you know, blocks in your career or, you know, your physical body, I had several moments on different levels of that. I, be I believe that we go through cycles, right? And as we evolve spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, things will continue to resurface. And then we understand things on a new level. So sometimes things come up periodically, you know, yeah. for me, there was a point in my early twenties where I just decided I, I can't continue to be a victim to my physical chronic pain anymore. And I had to switch my brain and stop acknowledging it as, as that. Um, I, I think I still internalized at that point in my life that I was a victim to it, but I stopped talking about it. Like I didn't no, no one understood me because no one else was going through the amount of physical pain that I was experiencing, both with migraines, you know, the physical chronic pain, plus all the digestive issues that I was having. And so that actually started to shift in a positive way. It was a very slow shift. You know, it, it, eventually it got to the point where I realized, wow, I'm actually creating this. You know, I'm creating it by where I'm focusing my attention and how I'm focusing my energy. And you know, I'm so much better now at catching myself throughout the day. If I do find myself falling back into those patterns, you know, even two, three years ago, I was catching myself very frequently falling into being a victim. And I think there's, there's a lot of key moments where we just have another enlightening moment, another enlightening moment. Um, some of the big, I guess, shifts for me have been through seminars that I've taken you know, I, I've done Joe Dispenza's week-long advanced retreat where for seven days, you're literally meditating five to 10 hours a day and completely changing your physiology in those moments. Because every thought you think, it creates a, an energetic shift in your body. And so we can focus on healing and believe we're in a healing space. And all of a sudden, everything just clears up for us, Right. And so I think that was what, yeah, Joe Dispenza, Bruce Lipton. Um, yeah, absolutely amazing work. And that was actually probably my biggest um, quantum leap in my intuitive life as well, because I was, I was having a lot of intuitive impressions, but when you're in a deep meditative state and you are so connected to the divine field for like 10 hours a day, the things that came through for me were just mind boggling. The spirit guides that came through and the messages and, you know, it opened me up my third eye on a, such a different conscious level because I had been meditating, you know, but not 10 hours a day <laughs> and not multiple days in a row. And so that was both one of the, the, probably the biggest spiritual awakenings that I've had. I was already awake, but it just took it to a totally different level. And then even more recently, you know, I realized doing um, Tony Robbins, he did a virtual event just the other month. And I had been to one of Tony Robbins events before, like 11 years ago, I had been to one of his live events, but it was just a really great reaffirmation for me to realize that we need to shift our physiology first. I've done so much work on reprogramming my mindset, shifting my beliefs, having better perspectives, but to physically move your body and get your body into a peak state within just a couple of minutes changes everything. And that has been a big game changer and shifter for me with, 
like my new level of healing my physical body. Like I, I want to get 100% healed. Like I want to be at the point where, you know, I'm not holding on to this 10% of the chronic pain anymore and continuing to be a little bit of a victim <laughs> anymore. I'm nowhere near where I was a decade ago. But I think for me, it's been, you know, the, the next level is totally changing my physiology like the actual physical vibration of my body and jumping up and down on my rebounder and, you know, putting on music and dancing two to three times okay. a day, just changing just, that part is I, make a big difference. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, so what was some examples you could share of that? I actually have my rebounder and like, that's one of the things I always do too, is listening to music, dance, and literally like dancing in my kitchen. I have my rebounder. I have like my little routines, but like, so what is your shifting into your physical within a few moments into a peak state? Like what is your kind of routine that you do? That that's pretty much it. It's all put on, you know, I've created some playlists that I totally love of music that resonates with me. And I start jumping and smiling and moving my arms up and down. And, you know, I, I have a background of being a dancer and I coached the salsa dance team and competed for like 10 years at Cal State Long Beach. And so like, I'll put on some Latin music and just dance it out. And for me, that gets that snaps me into shape really quickly. Also, you know, I like to start my mornings by just going for a walk in my neighborhood, going down to the beach. And I have, you know, hypnosis and meditations that guided ones to help reprogram my mind. So it's all for success and money mindset. And I do that while I'm walking so that I'm kind of getting my body in this flow and in this state of, of feeling truly connected with what is my truth instead of getting distracted by all the things in life that we could focus on and complain about in our current reality, but just constantly programming myself day after day for being in a better state, being in more alignment, and then physically shaking and moving my body so that we clear out some of that stagnant energy that we've been holding on to for so long. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Is it more effective if you do your pro, if you do your like, um, like let's say you create because i have a lot of different hypnosis things some are created some are my own that get me into a theta brainwave state and some are from my hypnotherapist that i've worked with in the past does it matter if it's in your voice or somebody else's voice is it more receptive to your brain if it's in your voice does that matter you know that's a great question and that's one i've kind of pondered on and wondered for a while i don't know i i feel like they're slightly different because i listen to again other people's like i'll listen to joe dispenza's meditations and then i listen to some of my own guided meditations and things like that um i think there is a power to hearing your own voice especially if you're doing a hypnosis where you're reprogramming yourself for self-worth self-love and success but i have found other people's you know, meditation is also very effective. Mm -hmm. um, I think they, they, they both have their own power. I, I don't know if I would weigh one as better than the other. I think they're just different. Sometimes it's nice to hear someone else's voice as an authority. You kind of take that in, in a certain way, but then you also take your own voice in, in a slightly different way. So I think they both, they're both very valuable. Um, I, I feel like we'd have to do some studies or some research to see like if one is better than the other or more effective than the other. I don't know how yeah, we would do that. I wasn't sure but if there was research out there that maybe you knew. I was just sort of- I don't know. Yeah. That's a great question though. I'm, I'm very curious about that. If anyone has done any research or, hey, maybe we can do the research. <laughs> <laughs> so what, um, when you finally started to embrace your gift as an empath, like what was the turning point where you decided to turn it into- like it just ex maybe you could explain how you transitioned into turning this into a business for yourself yeah. now that you're aligned with your purpose and you've taken all the wisdom and all the things that you've learned through the struggles and all the tribulations and you've, you know, now this has all served you, you recognize that. And now, now this is, now you're on purpose, you know, working. Yeah purpose driven mission. So what was it like to transition into that, like a little bit of that story, backstory? It was definitely um, kind of a slow transition. I think I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. And even, you know, a decade ago, I was seeing visions of myself on video, on the computer, you know, doing YouTube and, and talking to people. But at that point, you know, a decade ago, I didn't have the self-confidence. I didn't, be, didn't really believe in myself or feel like I had I didn't know what I wanted to speak about or what I wanted to say or what that was really going to look like. And so it was a bit of a journey. That was when I was still working as an athletic trainer. And the whole time I was just trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do? I know I want to do something where I can be anywhere in the world. And I didn't have the confidence to be the, the online presence that I 
have now allowed myself to be. So at that point, I, it started with like having an online business where we were selling organic products. And then that didn't feel really great because it wasn't really in alignment with what I wanted to do. So then I tried to get into real estate for a while because I thought, oh, if you want to make money, you have to be a business person, you know? again, didn't believe in myself. I felt like I had to be someone else. I had to be this businessy person. And as much as I love real estate, that wasn't really it for me either. And it got to the point where I was like, okay, this vision keeps coming up of me being on camera. I was like, I just need to start a YouTube video. I need to stop caring what other people think. I need to stop, you know, feeling unworthy. Like I'm not good enough. I'm not this, I'm not that. And just do it. And so I committed to making 100 videos in one year. And so that was like two videos a week, which was a lot. And it was all, you know, it was kind of all over the place. And when I look back to my first videos, I'm like, oh, wow, I was really uncomfortable on camera. <laughs> and I, it, it was, it was subjects of everything that I loved. You know, my, my background is in dance and athletic training, but I was also teaching, you know, things about spirituality and mindset work and law of attraction. And, and there was some fitness stuff in there and it was, it was a little bit of everything because I didn't really have a direction yet. It took me a while to find my niche and what was authentically me. And I think for a lot of people, it's just, you have to get out and do it and figure it out along the way. So it actually took me a couple years to figure out, like, now I feel solid. I'm like, this is who I am. Like, this is Natalie. This is my purpose. This is who I am meant to be. This I'm, I'm actually more of my authentic self now than I ever have been before. But it took me a while to get there. I had to get comfortable putting my content out online. And it started with just a YouTube channel. I wasn't even growing an email list. I wasn't thinking business at that point. I just knew this was my calling. God told me I had to do this. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started taking some online courses of how to be a teacher online, how to create your own online courses, how to promote it, how to market it and do all of that. And I, I started putting together a course during kind of in the midst of all of that. That's when I got my life coaching certification, hypnotherapy, NLP, all of these things that I was applying to my life as well. And, and I was doing a lot of law of attraction um, studying. Like I read every Abraham Hicks book in one year and I've reread many of them multiple times now. Um, so I started like piecing together a course and, and creating that and doing a couple live launches, which was really stressful and very hard in the beginning. It was so yeah. challenging, so overwhelming. Like for those of you who've done it, you, you understand, but I was so scared. I was so nervous and just all of my fears were surfacing that I had been working through. Um, and then over time it just kept evolving. You know, I, I feel like as I started gaining some coaching clients, I got more confidence in actually coaching. And this was during the time where my intuition was really opening up too. And I, I actually, um, I had a psychic who started coaching me and I was working with a metaphysician to really understand. And suddenly I had this whole intuitive awakening and started honing that. I started practicing intuitive work every single day for over a year. And that was how I started to mesh some of that into what I teach too. So it was, it kind of compiled over time. It was little pieces. I just followed my intuition on what felt like the next thing to do, you know, starting with, you know, coaching and then all the mindset work. And then it turned into more manifestation and then it turned into more of the spiritual intuitive work. And I feel like I've now found the top handful of things that have accelerated my life and the life of my clients so much faster you know, in my twenties, you just try a lot of stuff, right? You try like every methodology out there and all these healing modalities. And when I found the couple of things that really work, I was like, oh, this, this actually gets the results the fastest and is the most enjoyable. Mm -hmm. and so that's how I kind of pieced everything together. So now I have online courses. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you know, I'm in the middle of writing my first book right now. And there, you know, I, I've got stuff pushing out on all social media platforms, a lot of free content that's coming out. So it's, it's now just this fun, beautiful expression of things that I enjoy creating and sharing with the world to help people on a bigger level. Yeah. Well, you're a beautiful example that your struggles and everything that you go through do not have to hold you back and that they're actually preparing you for what you actually came here to do. So you can mm -hmm. step into what you just beautifully described as answering the call, right? To, to be yeah. of service. And the one of the things that you touched on that holds so many back that might be listening to this is the imposter syndrome at the beginning and not wanting to allow yourself to be seen and not putting your content out there and not sharing the messages that are coming through that you feel guided to share. So 
it's really important to just take that step, right? Just like you committed to a hundred YouTube videos um, per year. And even if they weren't good, I mean, I could probably not even like want to go back and look at some of my initial YouTube videos, right? But it doesn't matter. It's like the action, taking the action one foot in front of the other, not necessarily knowing how it's all going to pan out in advance. You're just following the guidance. And, um, but it does challenge all of your fears and all of your insecurities and all of your doubts and the entire imposter syndrome epidemic that, you know, that is, plagues people from moving forward with their, with their mission work. And so that's just really important. And so you're a good example of, of this process from start to finish. Yeah. It's, I mean, for me, it was scary every step of the way. And even now, you know, you think, oh, now I've got it together. I've been doing this long enough. And then you try the next thing and you're like, oh, this fear is coming up again. It's just a different level of it. Like that's just part of the journey is like overcoming some of those fears. There's a difference when our intuition is telling us, no, don't do this. That's when it's just this sinking feeling and it doesn't feel right. But there's another side of your intuition where you're like, oh, this is kind of exciting and I know I'm meant to do it. Oh, but I'm scared. That doesn't mean your intuition is telling you don't do it. That means that's okay. You're up leveling you're getting to the next level there's yeah. gonna be some fear there you just do it anyways <laughs> yeah that's exactly true and that's what i think i shared this in one of my igtv igtv videos it's the imposter syndrome is a sign that you're you're up leveling otherwise you wouldn't have that to begin with and so it's actually mm -hmm. a good sign that you're not you know the opposite of that would be being complacent and not following your dreams or not expanding mm -hmm. and i'd much rather deal with imposter syndrome personally <laughs> Yeah, that's a beautiful way of looking at it because that you're right. That really is what it is. It's not that we're not good enough. It's that we're pushing to the next level. And that's a really awesome thing. We're expanding and growing and sharing more of ourselves. Yeah, perfect. Um, so where can everybody find you online? Where do you hang out the most on social media and what? And of course, I'll share all the URLs in the show notes if you're interested in working with Natalie directly. But do you want to describe a little bit about what you're offering now? Yes, um, I do have a free video series called Develop Your Intuition to Manifest Your Ideal Life. So we'll make sure we everyone gets access to that. Um, it teaches you how to start developing your intuitions and things that hold you back and then creating a lot of solutions around that. Um, but it, you can find me just about everywhere <laughs> on the internet. Everything is under my name, Natalie Schlute. If you spell it correctly, I am the only one, so it's easy to find. I do spend a lot of time on Instagram. I hang out there a lot. I have a Facebook group that I hang out in. And then I also have you know, new content coming out on all platforms, my YouTube, my podcast, Facebook, Instagram, you know, all of that stuff. So there's, there's lots of ways you can find me. Just find one of my social media profiles, wherever you hang out the most, and I'm probably there. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I will include all of those in the, in the show notes for anybody that's interested. Thank you so much, Natalie, for sharing your story and your gift and your wisdom with us today. I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, thank you, Sarah. I'm so glad that you brought me here. And I'm so honored to be a part of your community. Perfect. You guys then tune in for another episode and um, I will talk to you soon. Namaste.